Hey guys, welcome back to this mini series. Uh, we're going to conclude this series on a little bit of, uh, I guess, biochemistry, pharmacology stem over here. Cool, so the first question, which of the following is least true? So again, what I'm going to have to do is go through those, basically check the logic, whichever logic doesn't make the most sense, that would actually be the answer. So having a look at 11, what we've got is the synergy between drug A and C is better than this synergy between A and B. So going to this, uh, going to this diagram over here, let's have a look. So we've got the synergy between drug A and drug B. Where can we find that? This would be at the T equals four hour mark. So the synergy between drug A plus drug B gives us a blood pressure of 130 over 90. And we've got to compare that to the synergy between drug, uh, I guess, what was it? Drug A, oh, I did drug A and drug B first. Cool, drug A and drug C. And what do we have with drug A and drug C? Where is that? We've got the T equals 10. Now, how am I getting this real quick? Basically, if we're trying to look at the synergy between drug A and drug C, what I've got to do is keep drug B at a value of zero and only have drug A and drug C. So that's where um, this value over here came from. But now I'm looking at between drug A and drug C, as we can see, there's no B. And what do I get? 120 over 80. So the synergy between drug A and drug C does in fact look like it's better than the synergy between drug A and drug B. So this does look like it's right. And so it is not least true. Okay, drugs B and drugs C are antagonistic. Now how are we gonna test that? What I'm gonna do is basically try to isolate, I guess, one of those and see what would happen if we were to add the other drug to it. So having a look over here, we have over here, what we have is only drug C is actually being added and we have a value of 130 over 90. When drug B was there, we saw a not so good value. What we basically have is, is a blood pressure that isn't as effective when C was actually on its own. So I would be inclined to say that B and C are um, antagonistic there. Cool. Okay, there is synergy when the drugs are given as a triple combination. So where is the triple combination? What I'm going to do is look at T equals to six purely because when we have a time lapse between here where there are drug administered, usually what that means is, um, is that we have, I guess, an equilibrium that's trying to form or all these values are trying to work together um, and, and, and get to a sort of stable value. And so what I'm going to do is take the T equals to the six mark and we see 160 over 110. Now that 160 over 110 is the highest value out of all the blood pressures. So clearly they wouldn't actually be, uh, be synergistic. It seems like there's, there's you know, a greater degree of interaction there that we're not, I guess, be, we haven't been exposed to yet, but they don't all work in synergy. And so that looks like it is the least true so far. Finally, when we have a look at D, it says drugs A and B used in combination have a positive effect on blood pressure in most patients. Drugs A and B, A and B, again, I'm gonna take this, this sort of stabilized value, A and B, not C, have a positive positive uh, con contribution to the blood pressure. Now, obviously that's referring to a comparison here. What do we compare it to? The baseline. And so as there is a drop when those two drugs are used, it does indeed look like that there is a positive effect on blood pressure. We can knock out D, it looks like C is most likely the least true. Okay, so having a look at question number 12, which ratio of drugs would have the best effect on blood pressure? So what I'm going to do instead of looking at all of these over here, I'm going to have a look at the graph and see where the best values actually lie. And so looking at all the blood pressures over here, we can find the best ones being at 120 over 80 and 120 over 80. So what are the ratios at this one over here? We have roughly a one to one to one. What are the ratios over here? We have a one to zero to one. Jumping down, I don't actually have a one to zero to the one. I only have a one to one to one. And so what that means is I don't actually need to look at the standard deviation to make it di uh, distinguish, to, to distinguish which one would actually be better. So out of all these, the best one would definitely actually be A. Fantastic, okay. So which, uh, which of the following is true about the interaction of drugs B and C? Okay, drugs B and C antagonize each other, thus creating the increase in blood pressure shown at hours five to eight. Looking at the hours five to eight, what do we see in the table? 
we're not only working with values that are working with B and C alone, we actually have a couple values that are working with A. So it doesn't seem that that one is actually hitting, hitting the mark here. Having a look at B, the effect of using drugs B and C is equally as detrimental as using drugs A, B and C together. So where is drugs B and C? They're over here. This gives this value over here. And then A, B and C are over here. Okay. Now, can we go uh, straight away into this question? I have a little bit of a concern with this one because uh, A, B and C haven't had any time, to, uh, sorry, B and C together haven't had a second sort of baseline check to, to equilibrate and make sure that those values are actually right. So I'll put, I'll put that one aside, uh, we'll knock that one off and I'll put this one aside because I'm not too sure yet, let's check out the other ones. Drug C is the, uh, is the best out of all the three. So having a look at all the values here, having a look at all the values over here, Drug C is the best out of the three. Okay, fantastic. So having a look at all these values, which, which drug actually looks like it has the best value? Is it A, B, or C? So A equilibriates over here. B, uh, sorry, C equilibriates over here. We don't have a value for B, so we can't actually test it. We can't actually determine if that is a correct response. So that one is actually gone. Now it says, drug C appears to have a greater synergistic effect with A than it does with B. So really what we're saying is drug C and A is better than drug B and A. What is the effect of drug C and A? Having a look down here, we have 120 over 80. What about B and A? B and A over here, fantastic, we have 130 over 90. So D really does seem like a really good response here. It does, C and A uh, do appear to have a better synergistic effect than B and A do together. So jumping back to B, and let's have a look at this again, it says the effect of using drugs B and C is equally as detrimental to using drugs A, B and C. So we're saying that B and C is equally de detrimental as using A, B and C. So despite the fact that I don't actually have you know, a proper um, next level reading for B and C, we can't be certain whether these two are actually the same. And really it seems like D does in fact make more logical sense here. Fantastic. Question number 14. Okay. This one's a little bit tricky, and what we're gonna to have to do is really break down the individual questions, okay, or the individual options. There is most variability when there is drug B in the system of the patients than any other drug. Okay, there is most variability when drug B is in the system uh, than any other drug. So going over here, what I'm going to do is look for the one that has the most uh, variability. And so for that, I'll be looking at the standard deviation. Looking at the ones that have the most variability, what we have is this one definitely has the most over here. And then I guess all of these are, are, are quite there, but really the major ones that we're looking at are these, are these three over here. And in all of them, what is actually consistent, well, I guess B and C are actually in all of them. So it looks like B and C contribute very heavily to the variability. However, when we look at C on its own, it has the same variability as if there was nothing administered. So it appears that every time B is added, that is where the spike in, um, in variability comes from. And so as a result, it does look like A is true, and, but what are we after? The least true. So A doesn't seem to be the answer there because of the fact that the statement is in fact correct. Okay, having a look at B, there is similar variability when there are either drugs A or C, but not B. So having a look, where do we find drugs A or, sorry, A or C and not B? A is over here, A's variability is 18 over nine, and only C, looking at C, it's 20 over 10. So 18 over nine and 20 over 10, we are in fact quite close. 
is this, uh, I guess, is this too far because we're working very, um, you know, not very specifics in terms of what's very significant here. I'm gonna put that aside because I think, I do think that they're, that they're not actually far, but they might actually be too far if everything else in the options makes sense. Don't forget we are looking for the least true one. So if I can find one that's more incorrect, then, then that would be the one I'd be going for. Okay. Drug A has the least effect on variability at the three. So this is the one that's a little bit challenging to test. So what does it say again? Drug A has the least effect on variability out of the three. How do we test this one? Drug A on its own, not much variability. Fantastic, okay. Drugs A and C, drugs A and C, when they're together, there's also much there's also not much variability. Okay, so it looks like A so far is, is hitting it on the head. Let's, let's, let's uh, compare with the other ones. If we were to test A and B now, A and B, we've got a variability of this, oh, this one down here, sorry, and then add C, it spikes, right? It spikes, so this is telling us that C does look like it does spike the variability. But when we have B and C, B and C, which is over here, that's its variability. But when we had A, the variability was decreased. So we take A out and the variability increases. So really it does look like A has the most limited effect on the variance here. So this one does seem correct. And so as a result, not a response. Now finally, had we started with D, we would actually see that this definitely is the right answer. The average variation in blood pressure of the general population is this over here. Now if you haven't read the stem properly, what you would do is go to the baseline and read that over here and you would say, okay, that's definitely the case. But what are we working with? Patients. We're working with patients. These are people that are hyper, hyper um, tensive. And so as a result, we can't make a comment on the general pop population. We can only make a comment on those that are hypertensive. And as a result, D does seem the, the least true out of all of them, knocking out B in this case. All right, uh, final, final question here. Which of the following is m the most likely pathway for drugs A, B, and C? Okay. <clears throat> Let's test these. A, B, and C all have a positive effect on blood pressure. Drug A acts directly on the blood vessels. Drug B acts on the platelets. Drug C acts to reduce volume. There's a lot of information here. In, in the heat of the moment, I would be tending towards not actually testing this directly because it has such a large volume um, of words here and a lot of different things to test. So I'm actually going to skip this and see if I can test the others. If they don't make sense, then I'll reevaluate A. Drug A antagonizes drug C. Let's just have a look at that. Drug A antagonizes drug C. Drug C, its blood pressure is over here. When we add A, we're dropping the blood pressure. Does it antagonize it? No. B's out. Drugs A, B, and C all have a positive effect on, on blood pressure. Drug B antagonizes both drug A and C. Okay. Does B antagonize drug A? This is where drug A was. When we add drug B, we get this value over here. It doesn't look like B antagonizes A, so that's gone as well. Drugs A and B reduce blood pressure, while drug C has no effect. Keeping in mind that the baseline was over here, where is drug C's effect? It's over here. There is a drop, so there is an effect. Drug C does have, a, have an effect on the system. And if we furthermore wanted to look at that, it says drug C causes kidney failure when given above three milligram per liter. Having a look at where drug C is, it seems to be most effective when it's given in, in around three, uh, uh, what was that, three milligram per liter. So really, that, that doesn't make sense. When we have it below three, it is of this value. When we start increasing it and synergizing it with A, we are uh, increasing the positive effect on blood pressure. So really, D is gone as well. So A here is in fact the correct answer. 
Now, did we need to know exactly, you know, the specifics of how, um, because these drugs here are in fact, you know, real drugs, they process, do we do uh, work within the human body in this way as stipulated in option A, do we, do we need that? No, we actually don't. But by knocking out all those, we can see that A is in fact the only one that's really valid. We have, they all have a positive effect on blood pressure. Um, all three together causes kidney failure. As we can see, when we add them all together, what we actually have is an increase in blood pressure so there is some sort of kidney failure going on drugs a and c have a positive effect on blood pressure and it looks like drug b um, drug b uh, doesn't there fantastic so guys i hope you found that useful if you have any questions please do get in contact with us you can email me at christian k-r-i-s-t-i-a-n at phrasesgamsat.com.au i wish you guys all the best have a have a wonderful christmas and new year